Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. And congratulations to those who are baptized. Amen. And a, and a mega congratulations to Evelyn on the front row here. That was two of her children in one day. Amen. This is our last session. Each session has been critical. Um, including this one. So please stay on target. We're almost done, just a few minutes, and we'll be on our way. Just to recap in, in just a few seconds. Please don't lose session one. It was about your, your belief, your agreement with God that, that He wants to get the supernatural through your life. Amen. Amen. We agree. We perceive it, Lord. And we repent of whatever within us may have held that back. In the second session yesterday morning, we realize that there are blockages within us, things that have grown up. You know, please, eyes forward, look at me a moment. I, I, I never found it difficult to love God and follow God when I had nothing. Because I was praying all the time and I was close to God. It's not difficult when you've got nothing. When you need a career or a marriage or, or you're praying, you know, you've got nothing. But it's, it, the hard part is when you've got everything to still love him and to still be passionate after him. Isn't that true? So the second session was not about taking your stuff away. It was just about getting the stuff under control so that it doesn't block him out. So number one, we believe in supernatural. Number two, we're going to make room for that supernatural. It's not easy. Jesus said that. He said it. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for someone who's got loads of stuff to enter this kingdom. And then he said, but with God, right? <laughs> with God, nothing is impossible. So even with my stuff and even with your stuff, you can enter this kingdom. Amen. Many have done it before you. So please make that room. It's, it's your heart. He's after last night. We just momentarily looked at a very big subject, the, the issue of, of, of our identity and moving from being slaves to being sons. I, I pray this one thing for everyone in this room right now, that you leave with this above all things, that you're a son of God, no longer a slave, no longer a slave to fear, no longer with a, a, a servant, right? No longer a servant heart. It's very, it's, it's so subtle. Do you know what? Full attention, please. How can I put it? When I, when I came back to Christ, I'd, I'd been a terrible sinner, right? I'm up to my eyes in sin. And I come to Christ and suddenly I perceive his broken body. We're going to have communion. I, I, and, and even though I know I'm saved, do you know what I want to do? I want to give him something. I want to say, Jesus, here, can I have something? Can he receive something for salvation? No. And I want to I serve you somehow. Remember the prodigal son? All right? So he's, he's, he's realized he needs to go to God. He turns back and on the way he says, Father, would you make me like one of your... Ah. You see? And the good father says, stop right there. That's not going to work. You're now a son. And it's going to be different. Put a ring on his finger. Put a robe on his back. Kill the fatted calf. And that son still served in his father's household. But this time, he did it for love of the father, not as a slave. Do you get it? Amen? And I pray that we, because there's things within me which are very much Old Testament Moses, and i got to move under Christ, my Savior, and, and emulate that. Thank you, Jesus. Today's a little bit different, and as I say, we're, we're going to have communion in just a moment. But I want you to leave with the equipment that God intended you to have in your Christian life. One of the books, my first book was called Nobody Ever Told Me That, because after I got saved, I was upset that some of the most important things I needed in the Christian life, I, I did not receive. I needed baptism in the Holy Spirit, right? Right? I mean, that's fundamental. And yet the church I was in was a Baptist church. No one did that for me. I had to go myself alone and fast and pray on a mountain and then came back and boosh. Right? 
Nobody ever told me that. That's why I named it that way. But it's not just baptism in the Holy Spirit that some of you lack. Uh, fight for it, right? Fight for it. Go for it. Don't stop until you've got it. Hello? Fight for it. Press in till you get it. Be determined to get it. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? But it's not just baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm a landlord and I'm a good landlord. I fix every issue. This is not guile. <laughs> it's the truth. I fix every issue. I have a team of people work for me and I look after my tenants very well. Do you think I'm better than God? No. The word Adonai means landlord, really. It's one of the names for him, for our God. That he's the, this earth. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Do you think he's a bad landlord? Do you think he's left you abandoned with, with, without the equipment you need for this task? No. Is the Christian life difficult? It's not easy, is it? It's not easy. But God has left you with many things, and this is my point this morning, many things that perhaps you have, you, you're not utilizing, or like me, baptism in the Holy Spirit, things that were never given to me or conferred upon me or my, my church did not lead me in. You're intended to be power assisted. I bought a minibus in Glasgow from one of our pastors. He said, I've got a minibus, I'm going to sell it to the church, blah, blah, blah. And I said to him, it better be, you know, it was an old bus. It better be able to steer. I, I want power steering, you know, because it can be difficult. And he said, no, no, it's fine. And I went to pick the bus up. Whoa, have you ever had one of those old buses? It was like turning this steering wheel was terrible. I'm, like, I'm going to shoot that guy. Vehicles are good when they're power assisted. It's hard work when they're not. Amen. The Christian life is intended to be power assisted. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right? And when we get these, they're called sacraments. When we get these sacraments, these blessings, these additional aids and helps and empowerments functioning in our lives, what a different story the Christian life is. What a different story. Suddenly the promises can become true. Instead of, to be honest, quite a contradiction of those promises. I studied church history at Cardiff University for, for two years. And, and, you know, but halfway through that course, I remember my eyes just being opened with what has happened to church in history. This is what happened. The church split three ways. And each section of the church took something. The Pentecostals took baptism in the Holy Spirit. And largely, the other groups didn't really pursue that. The evangelicals took the Bible. And a lot of the Pentecostals suffer for lack of theology, but the evangelicals suffer for lack of the Pentecost. Right? And then the Catholics uh, and the Anglicans, they, they took the sacraments. And I, you know, in, in college, I suddenly realized, hey, I need all three. I need all three. What a, what a really clever tactic by the devil to weaken us by separating the things. When you bring these things together, when you bring together everything God has left you, you're empowered. Hello? So don't let your background, your history, you know, re restrict you or confine your theology. Don't let that happen. As a Pentecostal, if you, when I got saved coming out of the Catholic Church, if you even mentioned the word sacrament, I would have a knee-jerk reaction. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not like that. And I, I needed to change my theology. A sacrament, basically, at the top of your notes, a sacrament is a physical action that has a spiritual consequence. Simple as that. The cross was a physical action, isn't that correct? Yeah? Jesus going to the cross was a physical action. Did it have a spiritual consequence? Oh, you better believe it. That's how we're saved. Baptism is the same, right? As we've just experienced today. That's what it is. So don't get hung up on physical things. Sometimes we are, we are required to take physical steps. Secondly, the sacraments that God gives, these empowerments, they make up for what I lack. That's what they're there for. They help me fulfill my calling. They help me walk and lead the Christian life. There's nothing religious about these things. And thirdly, it's just very good to know that they're split into three categories. 
There's the, those that are particularly concerned with initiation, baptism in water, confession and communion. Pastor Evelyn here is a midwife, and, and, and she will confirm that many people as adults are sick because of birth. Many diseases, many illnesses, they're caused at birth. Birth affects life. And some of you, if you think back, these things were not done correctly, whether it was baptism in water, which is why you heard these testimonies. Hello? People are going back to get this right within themselves. I, I Personally, I say, amen. amen. Or confession. If you came to Christ and you weren't, you know, you're still not right with people. Your attitudes are wrong or whatever. And communion for me, which is a huge thing. If you will involve these blessings, these empowerments that God leaves, it will change you body, soul, and spirit. And this first initiation is really about your soul. The second set of sacraments are confession and anointing with oil. And this really it concerns my body. Sicknesses. I love the anointing with oil. Absolutely love the anointing with oil. And another physical thing. And the third are the empowerment sacraments, baptism in the Holy Spirit, marriage, and ongoing communion. And I want you to leave this Easter camp, and for the, for the rest of your days, listen to me, please, for the rest of your days, make full appropriation and use of the empowerments your Savior has left you. Come on. Take full advantage of each one of these things. I haven't got time to give you testimony after testimony of people who listen and obey and how they get changed. Michael mentioned this morning, number one, baptism. Baptism, again, it's a physical act and people as a Pentecostal, I've got to get over in my head uh, how physical things can lead into a spiritual consequence. And if you have not been baptized in this place, there are four stages in the consolidation of our salvation. Repent, believe, be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. And I appeal to you, if you cannot in your life today give me testimony of these full four operations in your life, you're in Christian terms a Christian, but a dysfunctional one. And it's going to be hard for you. So please open yourself up. Have a good midwife. All right? Bring, go and find a pastor who will bring you through this process and get yourself fully equipped for service. Amen. Amen. Secondly, another beautiful thing, but it's a supernatural thing, and it's a bit tied up with what we were talking about last night, and that is the sacrament. They call it confirmation. I, I was confirmed in the Catholic Church. Um, we would probably refer to it as affirmation, but it's whenever who I am as a person the church recognizes it, you know? Uh, Pastor Tim here, when he came to London, he felt that he had a calling uh, to reach the Nepalese people. And he had a burden and a burden and a call. And he felt, listen to this, he felt God had spoken to him. He felt that he had it within. So God said it, I feel it. And what he needed, what he needs is the church to endorse it. See these three things? This is called affirmation, really, biblically. You need it for ministry, Tim. You need it because it changes you. It brings you officially into the empowerment of God. It's a wonderful thing. We need affirmation for ministry. You need affirmation for marriage. It's a great thing to have affirmation for marriage. When you're going to marry someone, that can be a bit scary. Shh, shh, shh. It can be a bit scary, all right? And if you can get around you the church's endorsement, that is phenomenal. Have you been there? It's a, wonder, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. When I know that God is affirming me in my choice, I know that I feel good about it, and the church is with me. That's great. So don't be a lone ranger. God has given you the body so that you can have affirmation in your role. Hallelujah. Amen. Excuse me, Seema, for using you as an example, but... Just a few weeks ago, just a throwaway comment in, in, the, in, a, uh, in a message in LFC, I just said Seema's an evangelist. She is, isn't she? In many things, but she's an evangelist. Um, 
And, and she mentioned that in Sue's house last week. I thought that was a very interesting point. She said, it absolutely blessed me. You've blessed me. Why? Because you said from your mouth, you spoke words. You said you are an evangelist. And when you said it, it's affirmation. It's affirmation. Do you get that? And some of you need that. I needed that. I've had men, mature men, older than me, longer in the ministry. It's supernatural, you see. It changes me. It confirms me. And if you lack that, this Easter is about you receiving that. Amen. Amen. Go through baptism. Repent, confess. Receive confirmation and communion. <clears throat> I've done much work on communion in people's lives. I find it very difficult to get the men to listen to me on this. <laughs> I ask many families, would you please have communion at home? And many churches say to me, why don't we do communion more often in the church? Well, I say to you, why don't you do communion more often in your home? Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Daily they met in each other's homes. And the fathers were leading their, fa their families around communion. So you say to me, I put it back where it belongs. Oh yeah. You have communion in your home. And I've said this many times. If, if a husband and father brings that bread around the table, it's supernatural. I had one couple, they were always bickering, always arguing, little jibes all the time. You know, could, couldn't seem to change them. And that couple were sitting one day in a, in, a, in a message on communion. And I said, just do what I'm telling you to do. Just, just obey. And that man, without any faith, just went home and reluctantly began to have communion. And it was probably about a year later, he came, and he was quite a hard guy, but, you know, tears rolling down his face, and he's, can I talk to you? I, what? And he said, my marriage is completely new. We don't, it just changed everything. Supernatural. We began to just share, and something changed within our home. Suddenly, I'm looking at the broken bread, I'm looking at the blood. And we're looking at it together. And how can I then turn and be nasty or snide? It's supernatural and it's powerful. But because it's physical, I think, and if you're single, please, when I travel alone, I have communion. I use anything. I'll use milk. I'll use water. The important thing for me is that I'm giving myself a reminder of the covenant I have with God. And I'm reminding the devil as well, by the way. I am a blood-bought son. Every day. The devil's up before you, so you better get up and get your mind straight with who you are. Some of you have heard this testimony, but <clears throat> it bears repeating. One of the most godly men I've ever met in my life was my father. Never read a Bible, but one, one thing, one thing he had was communion on a daily basis. That's all he had. And he would just go and, and sneak into a church and get down there on his knees. And that one thing... That one sacrament, that one blessing, that one place of faith, not just changed him, but it changed our family. And even if you, I want you to do all seven, but if you would do just one thing, how that would change your life. Let God in. Amen? Let God in. Believe him and trust him. Jesus said, do this. Do it. Just do it. Fourthly, confession. Proverbs 28 verse 13 he who conceals his sin is not going to prosper. This is not just to God. I need to confess my sins to God. And of course, only God can forgive sins. That goes without saying. But I, I, I ask you, please answer this question within your own heart. The last time that you knew you were wrong in your attitude to someone or in something you've said, are you a person who confesses? I was thinking this morning about... A friend of mine who's, that guy's prospering every time. <laughs> He's prospering beyond all measure. Uh, and it just came to my mind with this point. Because a couple of times that guy has done wrong to me. Yeah. How do I know? Because I got a phone call. Pastor, can I talk? Mike, listen, remember we were in a meeting the other day? Yeah. See when you left? Yeah. 
I, I, I spoke against you. I said you were this. I said you were that. I'm sorry for what I said. I shouldn't have said it. I don't even know why I said it. What's wrong with me? Would you forgive me? Yeah, no problem. And then he did it again. Yeah. Hi. It's me again. Okay. Yeah. That guy's prospering. He's prospering, prospering, prospering. But he's a wise man. Confess your sins to one another. The one thing that guy doesn't have, he may be a bit loose, with, but he's got a humble heart and he's not so proud and he realizes that if I regard iniquity in my heart, God does not hear my prayer. And whatever he's doing on his daily basis there, he knows how to keep this avenue open. Yeah? You need to see your prayers answered, isn't it? I need to pray and see the answer and if those answers, I know they're right, are not coming through, it's looking back at myself I need to do. Fifthly, the anointing of the sick. I, I just felt so strongly about this this morning in prayer for you. In fact, I could see some of you in vision form as in my prayer time very early this morning. The anointing with oil on, on the sick. Do you know when shepherds, I'm sorry, I covered some of you with oil yesterday. <laughs> That's exactly what they used to do. In, in times of old, there was no little, no, 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 no. They got jugs of oil and that was rolling down your forehead, onto your beard, down all, or it, not about how you look. It was, it, it, it was, God wanted you to get it, to get the picture. That's what baptism is about. I want you to get this. Something's happening to you, all right? And yes, it's physical, but... The, the parallel with this, particularly in the Psalms, the parallel is sheep. God often refers to us as sheep. If you've ever worked with sheep, you will know that sheep are tortured. The sheep are tortured animals. They, they, it's not a nice life, you know. The reason is because of the wool. Because ticks, little insects, fleas, live in the wool. And they eat in and they embed in the skin. And you will see sheep kick and run. And that's, that's an itch you can't scratch. They're tortured individuals. I'll tell you what, Jesus is a comparison here. Sheep and Christians. Some Christians could live with anxiety. Living constantly with stress. And no matter how good it is, there's always some little... Hello, is there anybody can witness with that? No matter how good, do, God, no matter what good do, God does to me, there's always this little affliction. And that is the very meaning of this anointing with oil. Because the, the shepherd would take the sheep and he would dip that sheep in oil, cover the body, and that oil would kill the ticks, kill the fleas, and the, the, the sheep would have no more t uh, tormenting. And be set free. Hallelujah. Amen. Simple thing. Anointing with oil. Physical thing requires faith. Scripture says if the prayer is prayed with faith. So if you're being vexed in your workplace. Or if there's a constant source of antagonism within your family. Or whatever it is. You get oil. It's a physical act. Say it again and again. It's a physical thing. And God says if someone is sick or vexed or whatever it is. Pour that oil. Get the elders around you. Let them pray for you. And if you are in faith, if you can cross this physical barrier, you will receive the spiritual fruits of that. Amen? Amen. So baptism, affirmation, communion, confession, anointing, and of course marriage. And marriage is, is, is one sacrament that's accepted by all denominations. It's called holy matrimony, right? But... I, I do much marriage counseling, and it's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's like a billboard when you work with couples, whether God is in the marriage or not. <laughs> some marriages are two. You know that? You go to some homes, and you know how many people are in the home? Two. Who's missing? It's supposed to be three. A threefold cord is not easily broken. And when you're with couples, you can very quickly tell whether there's a, a, a real strong leadership of the, of the Spirit of God in that home. Amen? Amen. 
That's what our vows are. And then I think it was last wedding we did with Atanasio and Sarah. I was making that point. A marriage vow is not a promise this way between two people. It's not. That, that, that's a promise. A vow is a different word. A vow is made to God. It's a promise to God. A promise is an earthly thing. A vow is a heavenly thing. And these two people, when they marry, this, this is where they're looking. Amen? Because there will be days when the husband doesn't want to be married anymore. But it's okay because the wife's going to hang in. But there'll be days when the wife doesn't want to get, be married anymore. But it's okay because the husband will hang in. You know what the problem is? There's days when they don't want to be married anymore. And that's when God steps in. That's the supernatural part. That's what the vow does. And if you make that with intelligence, understanding what you're doing, that's the power bit. For lack of knowledge, people perish and they suffer. The absence is there and they don't even realize it. Jesus, help us. And lastly, we're, we're going to come to communion table because our time is gone. It's the blessing of empowerment and cover. I take this. I think Roy's had to go because he has a very long journey. But I take cover and empowerment enormously, enormously important. Um, if you will just obey the cover of your church, your pastors, your leaders, I, it, there, there's nothing better for me. I don't care if I agree. I'm long past that. Long time ago. I don't need to agree with my leaders. I just need to obey them. Right? On, in everything but sin. Right? Everything but sin. I won't obey my leaders for sin, but I will obey them in everything else. Staying under cover. The sacrament of cover is supernatural. And I, I thank God for VFC. I can honestly say to you this morning, looking back all these years, over 20 years, with the same cover. Same cover. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At any time, if I'd been so stupid as to, you know, I did step out once only for uh, one year and Rick brought me back in, but I regretted that severely. I realized, listen to me, I was undercover, I got proud, and I left VFC. And as soon as I stepped out, <laughs> you know, yeah, it was like saving Private Ryan, you know. <laughs> the devil took me to pieces so quick. And do you know what I did? Rick invited me back and I got back undercover. Do you know what I, I in, in my mind, what I said? Whew, this cover is supernatural. I never realized, I never realized what a blessing I've got. Never realized how this works. From Aaron's head, down on his beard, down upon his shoulders and over me. Some of the most rebellious people in our churches are the most obedient. They never do anything wrong, never miss a meeting. They always say, yes, pastor, no, pastor. And they do everything you ask them to do. But they're the most rebellious people in the building. You know why? It's not actions so much. It's heart. And you can be sitting down, but in your heart you're standing up, right? <laughs> yeah? It's true. On, on this issue, don't say in your mind, oh, I've never done this. I've... Look at your heart this morning. Look at your heart. And let that heart, a broken and contrite heart, spirit, he will not despise. Amen? Amen. May God bless you. And I hope that you leave. I want you to take these things into your home. If you haven't been baptized, please get baptized. In your home, Mary's wanted to do a session, but we don't have time. She wanted each of the husbands to talk to your wife. If we'd had another session, we would have split this room up. Go and sit here, two chairs together, and say something affirmative. Look for the good. Maybe that hasn't happened in a while. Say something nice. Well, we can't do that here, but you can do that on the way home. You can do it tomorrow. And then do it as a, as a, regular, a regular basis. I was sharing, we haven't been married long, but we've had our first accountability day where she's able to tell me everything that she likes and doesn't like about me. She said recently, when's the next one? I said 2054. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> do it. Do it in your home. Take these 
things home. And husbands particularly do it. If you don't have communion, start having communion. Just do it. Everybody say, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do that one thing. If you're not in the habit of confessing your sins to one another, if you've done wrong, start today. Start today because it's supernatural. Forgive me if you've heard this before, but it's a true story. In Glasgow, I gathered the church just like this in a big circle around the room. People just like you. And I said, if there's anyone in this room that you've offended, go and say sorry to them now. now I expected people to move. So I was just fiddling around. I finished what I was, I was looking. Did I not make it clear? Okay, let's say it again. If there's anybody here you've offended, could you just go in and say sorry to them? No one moved. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I'd said, I'd used the word junkie in, in a message I used. And one guy who was a heroin addict got offended. He said it was negative. So I walked across the room to him in front of everyone. And with a nice loud voice, just by way of giving an example, I said, Jim, you're my brother. And the other day I used the word. I didn't realize it was offensive, but that's not the point. I referred to you as a junkie, and that was a cheap word. Would you forgive me for being careless with my speech? Is that all right? He said, that's okay, Pastor Mike. And then I rebuked that crowd. He said, who are you with this communion here to not go and say sorry? What's inside you? Has this spirit ever been broken? Ever? If I regard iniquity in my heart, if I can't keep peace with you, please don't tell me you've got peace with God. If someone does not love the brother they see, you cannot love God. You cannot love God. 1 John, if you do not have enough humility to keep fraternity, if you've got children, you know how this is. The one way to upset your father is to argue between the, the kids that argue. Isn't that correct? One that hurts the other. That's, nothing brings more pain to a father's heart than that. This father is no different. And in this house, in your home, please confess your sins to one another. Do it with wisdom. But for me, it's, it's a powerful, beautiful thing. Not just for the relationship, but for general healing in life. If, if, if I hide my sin, I will not prosper, not, not just finance, but I will not prosper in my life and proceed in my life. If you don't have oil in your house, get some oil. And when you get sick or if you're being vexed, use that oil. Be careful of what I say here. <laughs> I had a situation uh, maybe one year ago. You don't know anything about it. Very, very serious situation. Uh, Roy knows. What do you do, you know, when you're facing a massive earthquake? What do you do? I have communion. I remember the day I went home. I got down on my knees and I said, God, you know what? I need you. I really need you. I need you in this situation. And I began to search my heart about any sin in my life because I need him to hear me. And I changed a few things, altered a few things, and I kept on praying. Is there anything else in my life that's wrong? I need an answer to this prayer. And you know, it was such a short time. Answered. See, that scripture, it's true. <laughs> if you do not hold sin in your heart, he will hear you. Amen? Amen. So I, I know my prayer was right. I was praying for something good, something biblical. And God heard my prayer and he'll hear yours too. But don't let a grievance with your husband or wife or with your family or with the church ever restrict you from God. Could I have the worship team? We're going to have communion in, a, in just a moment. And I want to do it in a very specific way. <clears throat> Excuse me. The worship we had earlier there, that was just fantastic, wasn't it? This is how we fight our battles. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Can the ushers go ahead and give out the communion and just hold on to the communion?
Have you got enough helpers? <laughs> With the prodigal son, it was a banquet table, it was a feast, and he was invited to sit down and to rest in his status, his class, as a son and not a hired worker. And Jesus told that story as an example of this bread this wine of his banquet his broken body broken for us this is a sacrament and we don't understand it but supernaturally when you give thanks this Easter give thanks for Easter 2,000 years ago when he suffered so much we thank you Lord we thank you for the cross individually we thank you and as sons we come to this great 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 banquet I thank you that your blood cleanses us from all sin and here and now this morning we repent of everything we've done in the past even right here this morning any error in our behaviors or our ways yes. forgive us God This broken, this bread represents health and wealth. And this blood is the only thing that can take away sin. Two different things in your hand. It's the blood that removes my sin. It's his broken body that gives me health and a successful life. Lord, I thank you for sacramental impartation for supernatural impartation. And I pray the power of communion to cleanse, to heal, mm -hmm. and to renew our relationship with you. Just bow your heads. I'm going to give you a moment to pray your own private prayer. Jesus held the Last Supper it's symbolic that once there was a division between God and man but through this meal your life is restored back to God your eternal life saved at enormous cost and brought back to God at once we were lost because of you, Jesus, we're found and safe. We have a Savior. And we're back where we belong. 
So with all the thanks that we can muster, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for communion. Thank you for this. Thank you, Lord. Just go ahead and take the bread and wine. Give me your full attention for one moment. Can we be still? Just everyone stand still. Okay? When Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, there was no one there. Nobody there. Didn't make a big fuss out of it. Wasn't hyped up. Didn't get a big crowd. There was no one there. And when they... And when they came remember they couldn't believe it but it was quiet one of the most significant things that ever happened to me anointings I received was from a pastor who very quietly came over to me there was no noise and he just put his hand on me and he said Lord would you bless Mike and at that moment I received that good man's mantle many people after came to me say you've got his mantle I said yes I know I, I know how did that happen it happened so quiet we were just in the church and I said would you pray for me and he just put his hand he didn't shout he just said bless you and I was never the same never the same and I don't want you to get caught up with hype Johanny quite rightly said to me this morning these people need a moment with their God these people need some quietness and reflection just to get themselves right back where they belong and I said that's true it's true for me so this altar is open and it's open for you to respond to God and to kneel down here and to let him speak to you and that's my prayer that no man needs to speak to you at this moment, but that God himself speaks a prophetic word of affirmation. Husbands and wives, if you can, if you want to come and kneel here before God as a couple, then good. Singles, if you want to come, come and kneel as a single. I want you to connect with your God. Come.